Okay, so um, let's shift our focus to uh, accounts receivables focused methods of estimating bad debt expense. All right, um, so we'll start with the receivables method, the percentage of receivables. All right, uh, you just take year end accounts receivable in total and multiply it by your bad debt percentage. All right. Um, now, when we do this, we want to keep in mind that this gives us our ending balance in the uh, allowance for doubtful accounts. All right. Not the expense. Right. So, as a visual illustration, um, well, we have to. Estimate we have to subtract out total estimated bad debts from the previous allowance, right? Uh, and that gives you the current expense. But for a visual, this is an example Music Land has $50,000 in accounts receivable and a $200 credit balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts on December 31st, 2015. Past experience suggests that a five percent, that five percent of receivables are uncollectible. All right, so we take five percent of receivables, you get twenty five hundred, but that's not your expense. That's not your bad debt expense. That is the ending balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts. Well, the problem also told us that there was two hundred dollar, a two hundred dollar credit balance in the allowance. So our expense is actually the adjustment, the $2,300 that gets us from the $200 balance in the account to the $2,500 ending balance, desired ending balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. All right, so that's just a key step to remember. That's one that we don't have to worry about when we're employing the percentage of sales method. All right. The aging of receivables method is um, the by far and away the most commonly used method, and it does have the most steps. It's not difficult, but it is more to remember. So the first step is classifying the amounts in receivable by how long they've been owed and uncollected, i.e., how old is the account. It's based on the premise that the longer something is owed to you and uncollected, the less likely it is that will, it will ever be collected. All right. Um, each age group is multiplied by its estimated bad debt percentage. And this is given information. Problems will give you this. Um, and the general idea is that older uh, accounts are going to have higher bad debt percentages, right? So the theory is this is the most accurate means of valuing receivables, all right? Estimated bad debts are totaled for each group. Um, and of course, we'll work through many of these in class. So here's our summary of methods. Um, income statement focused is your percentage of sales, which is very easy, but also very seldom used. All right. Balance sheet focused. There are two methods, percentage of receivables, which is also really not used all that often. Um, it does have an additional step to use. The industry standard the most commonly employed method, and honestly the most complex, is the aging of receivables, which requires that you be given how old amounts are in receivables. And so we'll spend most of our time uh, working through aging of receivables in class. The last thing to be aware of for receivables is that they are commonly traded. Um, companies may need to convert receivables into cash due to 
working capital management issues, i.e. to get money quicker. So they may sell receivables uh, at a discount uh, to companies whose business is collecting receivables. These are collection companies. Um, or they may pledge receivables and, and basically get a loan against them. Uh, these are two methods that companies may employ to accelerate the cash collection cycle so that they can continue to operate without being hamstrung waiting on receivables to come in.